I have Matthew Barry, the ESPN senior fantasy football analyst, big fan of his, writer, TV personality. Matt, thank you for coming on the playbook. David, it's my pleasure. Right? We, uh, I think you and I met uh, at a Super Bowl party like two years ago. We have a lot of friends in common. We hit it off and we're like, we got to do the pod. And so I'm glad it's finally coming to fruition. You know, with ESPN, it's not always easy. I've had Sage Steele, Dan Patrick, all the group. It just takes a little while, but we eventually get you in, you know, just like fantasy. We're a big company. We're a big company. We got a lot of, we got a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Absolutely. But right. I know all the people you just mentioned. Yeah. Great company and great personalities like yourself. And Tannenbaum's a good friend of ours as well. And it's many others, but you know, fantasy is taking a, a little while. I call it my gateway drug of, uh, of sports, you know, without, without fantasy, we would not have the legalized situation that we have today, the ability, the polling, the gambling, the lottery, the, the, it's amazing. How early did you know, because you've been involved, you know, in sports for so long and in the media side as a personality, when did you see, wow, maybe I should attach my brand to fantasy? So, okay, so there's a couple of things there. So first off, I've been doing it since I was 14 years old and anyone that's watching can be like, okay, yeah, that dude ain't 14 years old. So obviously <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been playing for over 30 years. Um, so for a long, long time before, you know, before there were personal computers, before there was the internet, like when you kept stats by hand, you had to, you had to wait for USA Today come out once a week and calculate your stats by hand because they had all the box scores. So it's been a long, long time there and i would say dave just to take it back for a second here in terms of when you talk about the gateway of fantasy i would say it's a gateway to much more than that so think about going back there i would say like long before there was twitter or instagram or facebook or even myspace and friendster for anyone that remembers friendster yeah like i would argue that fantasy sports and specifically fantasy football was the original online social community that, you know, you would, you would, in like the mid nineties, when it was just the internet was first starting, one of the first things that you could do on the internet um, was play fantasy sports. And so there would be these kind of rudimentary message boards and you would, you know, you would talk trash with your friends or you would leave messages and go back and forth. And it was, it was an online social community that we take for granted now, but back then, and one of the great things that fantasy does is it brings people together. You know, like I'm in a league, my very first fantasy football league is a bunch of guys I went to college with. And we live all over the country now. We all went to Syracuse University, class of 92, just to age myself here, go Cuse. And, you know, without fantasy, like I would have stayed in touch with a couple of them, but not all 12 of them. And I've gotten to know jobs and, and you know, and marriages and babies and, you know, and, and it's a way, I because once a year we all get together, right? And it's a way for me to keep in touch with those friends. To answer your specific question about when I decided, uh, I would love to tell you that I was super smart and I saw this rocket ship happening and I said, I need to attach my brand to that rocket ship. I would love to tell you that I had this grand plan. But the truth is, is that I don't think I even knew what a brand was back then. Uh, what I want to do is in 2000, uh, I'll try to do this very quickly, 1999, I answered a blind ad for a website called Roto World, which was a very popular yeah. fantasy sports yeah. website. It is now, but back in the day, this was the days of AOL and CompuServe. You know, you, you got mail. Like it was actually like a novel thing to get an email. You were all excited. So Roto World had just started up and they were looking for fantasy writers. I write them an email and I say, hey, I'm a professional writer living out here in Hollywood. I write for TV and movies, but fantasy sports is my passion. I absolutely love it. Could I try out? Could I send you a sample? Because I think it'd just be so much fun just to write a column on the side for you guys. They wrote me back the next day and they said, we looked you up on IMDb. Married with Children is our favorite show of all time. You're hired. So because <laughs> I wrote, you know, because I wrote, uh, you know, jokes for Al Bundy, uh, I got a chance to write a free column from site on the internet that no one went to. But I think I'm a pretty good writer. Column took off. And in 2004, I had enough followers and people were starting to make money on the internet. And I thought, well, you know what? I have enough followers. Maybe I can make a couple of bucks on the side. And so I started my own blog. Um, and it was, to the best of my knowledge, it was the first fantasy sports blog back then. And so I started my own blog called Talented Mr. Roto, which was my, my nickname. 
And Dave, I, I didn't know anything about venture capital or private equity or raising money or Shark Tank. None of that stuff existed. I mean, it existed, but I wasn't aware of it. I was too dumb. <laughs> so I scraped together a couple of bucks of my own money. I found a couple of guys that I thought were smart writers that were, that were good fantasy minds. And I realized, and I started my own blog, right? But I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to buy any advertising. So um, that the best way for me to promote the website was me. So just hustle. And I went to every radio station, every website, every TV station I could find saying, I'll write for you for free. I'll come on your air for free. Just mention my website, just link back to my website. Just send me the traffic. I'm still making money, still making my living as, the, um, as a screenwriter for, in Hollywood. And, and what, that, what happened there, David, was I became comfortable talking in front of a microphone. I, I made myself into a personality. And in 2005, and I, you know, I talked about this, I, I wrote a book called Fantasy Life. It was, uh, it was a New York Times bestseller. It spent many months on the list. It debuted at number five. It, that, none of that has anything to do with the story, but the book took me, took me two years. So I like to throw it in there, you know, just because... Nice. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it means a lot to me. It took me two years to write and I'm proud of that. But anyway, so in my book, Fantasy Life, I talked about this. In 2005, I was incredibly depressed, like massively depressed. Like I hated my life and I couldn't understand it because I, I had this high paying job as a screenwriter. I was married. I had my health. I had friends and I couldn't figure it out. And I was in therapy. And finally, through therapy, I realized that the only thing that made me happy that clinical depression runs through my family. And that, so there was, a, there was a reason for where this came from, but ultimately the only thing that made me happy when I went to bed in the morning and I woke up at night was this dumb little website that I had. You know, this, this little blog that I had where I had a couple thousand kids on it. I was, that's all I thought about. And so what I decided, again, going back to your question about when I decided to make this, you know, this brand move, the truth is, is that all I did was chase happiness. I chased yeah. happiness. I just decided, I said, you know what? I realized I make a lot of money as a screenwriter. And the idea that you could make a living, the idea that you could make a living talking about fake football on the internet in, you know, in 2005 was kind of a, was a, a random one. But I said, I said, I said to my writing partner, I said, let's write one last movie, bank the money because I'm going to quit show business and I'm going to try to make a career of this. Like I'll probably make $10,000 a year. I'll figure it out. I'll scrape by. But it's the only thing that makes me happy. So all I want to do is chase happiness. So the answer to your question, it's a little bit of a roundabout way, is 2005. And the reason I did it wasn't because of some grand master plan that I thought, well, this thing's going to be big and I want to attach my thing. I'm, I'm going to make money and blah, blah, blah. It literally was about saving my life and just wanting to chase happiness. And the crazy thing, and, and my passion, chase my passion and, and, and chase happiness it's a phrase I use a lot. And uh, what's crazy, David, for you and all your listeners, is that by doing that, by, by leaving show business and chasing happiness, I went from behind the scenes to on screen. Like I've now, I've now been on TV. I've won an Emmy. Uh, I've been in movies. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an, I, have a, I have a role in Avengers Endgame. I had to leave Hollywood to get into a movie. Right, I had to leave Hollywood to be on TV, and I've had so much more success, financial and otherwise, by you know by just chasing happiness and not worrying about anything else. Um, I, I've had a tremendous amount of success, more than I ever dreamed. As to your point, like I caught that rocket ship of fantasy football, and I, you know, I I, I think uh, you know I had a role and helping build that and make that popular in America. It's one of the things that I'm credited with and uh, it's something I take a lot of pride in. And so, uh, you know, promoting the game and being an ambassador for it. And, uh, you know, that's ultimately what ended up happening. Yeah, they are gonna be when they put you into the Hall of Fame for that, you know, that special award. I forget the media award, that'll be perfect. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, working with the Hall of Fame. We'll have to nominate you. But two Please, shows, God bless. That would be amazing. Would it be? Because, well, for me, yeah. you know, my mission is to empower over a billion people to be happy. And you're a case study for how, if, if you're happy and passionate about what you do, you know, there's no laziness in you. 
you, you, you know, have always put the effort in to build that career and build your brand and build the opportunities. But I see you as someone that does everything they can to angle towards what they want with your passion and have faith that you're going to end up somewhere better than you even could imagine. And you seem to be very settled in that, which I, I love from the time that I met you. Um, and you also do a lot for other people. You know, Jimmy V week is this week. And, you know, obviously that's a big deal. You guys have raised millions of dollars. Um, but one of the things I find interesting is through this, you know, new world of, of accelerated growth and change. And, you know, tw 20 years ago when you and I probably had met and never even remembered each other. Right. We would have never said, oh, yeah, we'll have our own shows. We'll fly around, you know, tw 20 play, you know, all, and it, like, it still blows my wife's mind. She's like, you actually like have fans, you know, like what, what yeah. you and I was more behind the scenes than anyone. Right. Because I was propping up the greatest names in sports and entertainment for so many years with Lee and Warren. Uh, that no, you know, I was always, oh, that's Lee's guy. That's Warren's guy. You know, you, you knew the face. But more yeah. importantly, you know, there's so many different ways that we go around. One of the interesting partners that you have is Jetit. And, you know, it's a technology really more than than, than a jet service, the way that I see it. The innovations and crap, I've used uh, Jetit as well myself. You know, why and how do you choose a partner like them to help you get to the productive and accessible side of what you need to do? Well, you know, it's interesting because it's um, similar to my career path where I didn't have a spreadsheet and look at like, what's the growth injury industry. I just, I followed my heart. Right. And so to answer your question, how do I choose a partner? Same sort of thing. Like, um, you know, I met Glenn Gonzalez and I've written about him as well. Like if you, if you search Matthew Berry, love, hate Glenn Gonzalez, G O N Z A L E S, you'll read his story. But this is a guy that I think is a, is an American hero, right? So Glenn Gonzalez was a lieutenant, a lieutenant colonel, in the Air Force um, and started, wanted, saw that there was an opportunity after he got out of the Air Force, wanted to spend more time with his family. He's a family guy, which I love and appreciate. I am as well, know you are too. And so um, uh, he, he decided what he wanted to do and you should have him on the show, by the way. He'd be Please. an amazing guest for you. Yes. Glenn would be an amazing guest because he's a, he's a self-made man. And basically what it is, is as he got out and got into the private sector, he realized there was an opportunity in private aviation, a way to basically offer private aviation at a third of the price, but still have the same level of, of luxury, of fantasy. And so, you know, as a military guy, he he's aware of, you know, being able to get the most out of his people. He's a leader of men, he was a Lieutenant Colonel, you know, he trained some of our fighters that fought overseas that flew uh, fighter pilots. And so his story, I don't want to tell his story because that's his story to tell, but um, you know, it's, it's hard, it's hard to start a company, right? We agree on that. It's hard to start a company, um, that's in private aviation because planes are expensive, right? So, um, and it's hard to start a company, um, uh, in, uh, you know, when you have no business experience, which at the time Glenn didn't, right? And honestly, and I think this is something, I don't think this is something ever Glenn would say, but I'll say it. I think it's hard to start a business as an African-American, you know, in our country where we still have all sorts of problems in that. And so Glenn was facing all those challenges, but somehow when you meet Glenn, he's an impressive guy and he convinced, he convinced somebody to give him some money to buy one plane and two employees. He started out with one, one plane and two employees. And now three years later, he is the largest customer of the Honda jet company. You know, they've got 11 jets, they got five more on order. And so in terms of why did I choose to work with them? I worked, you know, when I met Glenn and he talked to me about the vision that he had for Jetit and I saw sort of the family atmosphere. He's also, by the way, if you've read me for any amount of time, you know how important veterans are to me and yeah. the sacrifices, not just veterans, but their families. I don't think people talk enough about the, the sacrifices families make of veterans because while they're off fighting for our freedom, they're back at home. They're taking care of the kids. They're taking care of the house. They, they sacrifice a lot as well. And so um, I always write about veterans you know, multiple times a year, especially on Veterans Day. And so they have over 52 former, I think they have over 50, I want to say it's 52 now. They have 52 veterans working for them. Uh, I take that back. I take that back. I want to make sure I get this stat right. Uh, they have 52 employees, uh, about half of which are veterans. Perfect. So, I mean, that, that's important, you know, uh, from all aspects of the military and high ranking positions as well. And so 
just all those things to me spoke to me about you know about the company you know they they um they do a lot of charity work as well you know they've uh, they've donated seven hundred fifty thousand dollars this year to COVID related charities um, as well so it's just uh, I feel like you know as we talk about sort of brands and you know I think this all sort of comes together right I think it's important that it if you worry less about you know what's the right market fit and where's you know and 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 more about like I think if you surround yourself with good people and you're a good person yourself and you work hard and you're passionate, good things happen. They, you know, like it, that's just all it is, is like, you know, there was nothing, nothing strategic about it, but just like I met them and I was just like, you guys are awesome. Yeah, I'm in, you know, and I've, I've had other opportunities where it's a lot of money and I've met the people and I'm just like, this doesn't feel right. Well, you know, I, I listen to you and realize, you know, I have a philosophy of allowance and it takes this blend of persistence, uh, which you've had to be so successful in Hollywood. You know, you have to be seriously persistent and consistent in what you do, but there's very few people. And I really practice this and encourage others on this show and, and listeners to blend in allowance, you, you know, and, and I keep hearing you know, these stories, even through, you know, what could be one of the most challenging economic periods in our country's history, uh, definitely uh, socially uh, and economically, we have great challenges, but, you know, guys like you are, you know, aligned with things that are actually doing better, you know, through the accelerated change. And Jetit is one of the companies that are doing well. I tell kids all the time, if line your skills and your capabilities, your knowledge and your desire with something that's doing well, just go to the stock market and look at the top 50 companies. You can pick out industries, careers and jobs like this. Uh, you might as well go with the winner, but you have this allowance blend with hard work, you know, and that's rare to find because most guys don't have the patience uh, to do that, that have the same personality that you and I have. But I appreciate that, you know, and it, it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, I'm sure like when you were representing athletes, right, you know, that's the same thing you get, you guys would pick, athletes get pitched things every day, you know, <laughs> six ways till Sunday. And it's not your job to say yes, it's honestly your job to say no, saying this is right for you, this isn't. And a lot of it comes down to people. And so that's, you know, um, I often find myself in the, in the same spot. But I think, David, that's such great advice when you talk about allowance, because, you know, I, I have kids that, I have a kid that just graduated from college and I have another one that's uh, my two oldest, one just graduated from college and one is a, um, uh, and by the way, and he interned at Jetit, got him an internship and, in, uh, you know, and like he had a great Send time. Send him my way. Like, Send him my right? way. Right? <laughs> I will. I absolutely will do that. Don't, uh, don't offer because I will absolutely send him your way. But yeah. um, one of the things I talk to my kids about is, I said, you know, and I'm just, I'm a big believer in following your passion. Right. I mean, obviously, you just heard my sort of career story, but same sort of thing. Right. And it's just, you know, what I explain to them is like, I remember, this, you know, and it's one of the things like so like, right. One of the reasons why I think Jetted is successful is because it's a it's an aviation company built by aviators. And Glenn Gonzalez has been flying since he was 19 years old. You know what I mean? Like, he, you know, he was in he was in the Air Force and then he was a private jet. And then, you know, now he started, the, you know, so it's built from the ground up by a aviators. And I think one of the reasons I'm successful is like, like. I'm a fantasy player. One of the re one of the things that I get from fans all the time is this is going to sound insane, but go with me here for a second. <laughs> I remember reading an interview. Remember Huey Lewis in the news? Of course. Yeah, I remember reading an, an interview with Huey Lewis in the news, and I, I love Huey Lewis. Uh, one of my first concerts I ever saw, and they're asking Huey about the, what he thinks his appeal is, his success, and Huey's like, you know, listen, I think that listen, I think I'm a pretty good musician, but they're better musicians than I am. I think they're, I think I'm a good songwriter, but they're better songwriters than I am. He goes, I think our appeal is we're a bar band that made it. You know, we're like, we're like the bar, you are the band you go to see Friday night at your local pub and we're, you know, we play for three hours and you love us and you're having a great time. And like, we're a bar band that made it. And I, that stuck with me for a long, long time. And when ESPN has done research on me and sort of my appeal, it's like, I've always tried to be like, I'm a fantasy player that made it. You know, I, I don't try to, because I don't believe this, like that, you know, I'm smarter than you and I'm coming down from, you know, <laughs> Mount Fantasy with all the knowledge and the stats. And I'm just like, listen, guys, here's what I think. Here's why I think it. Let's do this. Let's do that. And, I, you know, people can smell a phony. And so I think that, you know, they know, they know that I am, 
you know, that I, that I'm still in 15 leagues. I still sweat all the losses, you know, and, you know, I still go crazy on, you know, when, when, uh, you know, when last on the Monday night game, we're just coming off that crazy yeah, great game. Browns Monday night game. Right. And, you know, like, I needed two more points from Kareem Hunt, you know, like to, to complete my Monday Night Miracle. And, and so they, you know, they can sense that. And so I think following your passion, what I was going back, what I was talking about with my kids is what I've said to my kids is like, and they're like, oh, what should I major in? What should I, and just like, I said, forget all that. I said, what do you like to do? And this is a story I told them, this is going to be insane, right? But I, I, um, I, I do a podcast as well. I'll give a shout out to the Fantasy Focus. If you, if you yeah. like fantasy sports, give out... Uh, Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can get it. Uh, the, fan, the ESPN Fantasy Focus. Um, we do it every day. And um, we were doing a show in Baltimore. And this guy reached out. And we were doing a live podcast in Baltimore. And this guy reaches out and he says, hey, I run the Guinness Brewery here in Baltimore. I'm a huge fan of the show. I know you guys talk about beer on the show all the time. My co-host, Field, is a, is a huge craft beer drinker. And he says, if you guys want to see how beer is made, come to our, the Guinness Brewery. That sounds cool. Let's kill a couple hours before the show. So we go do it. Uh, lovely staff. They're really nice. And as we go there, we're going through the, we're going through the, the um, brewery. And we find out that, so there's a bar at the brewery where they sell, I want to say, I'm making up a number here, but it's something like 25 beers, 25 different Guinness beers. And they're telling us that there's only like three or four, if you go to your supermarket or your liquor store, there's only like four Guinness beers you can buy. And I'm like, what's that? He said, this is a testing ground. Like we try it out. We see what sells well here. If it sells well here, then we, you know, we do a limit, we do a, you know, a limited distribution. If it sells right there, then it goes national. But this is where we, this is kind of a testing. And I said, well, how do you do this? And, and they take us and they show us that like, there's a room where people are making literally every day. All they do is try to come up with different flavors of beer for Guinness. <laughs> And then there's another room where there's guys that are just going in and they're testing it. It needs more hops, a little less barley, whatever, right? So I told my son this. and I, I said, know his job I seems want... more fun. Right? Well, that's what I said. I said, my point of telling that story, and I would tell this to anyone listening, and I, tell my, I told my son that story. I said, the, the point of that story is that there are people whose entire job is drinking beer. Right? And I'm just yeah. like, so I mean, like, and I said, I said, listen, I have no disrespect to those people. Like, I have higher hopes for you, my son. But like, if you came to me and I said, what do you like to do? don't worry about a career don't worry about a path don't worry about just what do you like to do i said because we're in such a world now where when you find something you like to do you can make a career at it i said like if you came to me and i said you know what matthew dad whatever if i love drinking beer i'm you know i'm obsessed with beer okay well there's a career for you i actually know a guy i could call you and see if we could get you an interview uh, look, like, look, look look at dr pimple popper she has more followers and makes more money than both of us combined and we're pretty right? successful at what we do <laughs> well that's exactly right like i love playing fantasy sports you know I, when i talk to college kids and i'm sure you do the same thing david when i talk to college kids i say here's the thing when i was in college my career didn't exist like yeah. forget like making a living at it my career didn't exist the you know like the internet was just starting when I was in college. So the idea that you could, you know, in fantasy football wasn't what it is today. So the idea that I could make a living, and by the way, a nice living, talking about fake football on the internet, which is what I do. You know, I, I have some TV shows, whatever, but like at the core of it, my job is to talk about fake football on the internet. And, you know, so, you know, I, like whatever, like, you know, I told my, my, my son, I was like, listen, you know, when you started college, TikTok, wasn't a thing right i like there's always going to be new emerging careers and, and paths and technology so find what you love and there's a way to make a living at it if if you chase happiness and you chase your passion that's what i believe you know leads you to success and you've done that at every level and which is why i was so attracted and excited uh when i met you and to have you on the show because you are the epitome of what i teach someone to develop the skills the knowledge of who and what around what you love to do and what you can learn to love to do because you have learned a lot about fantasy over these decades as I have learned about what I've done and done such a terrific job of not only for yourself but passing it on and empowering other people and I love the story of happiness that will be repeated multiple times uh, I also want to thank Jedit too because uh 
they had a lot to do with helping me get you on here. This extraordinary company. I definitely, you, you owe me a guest. So we got to have Glenn on here. Okay? I, I will, I will text Glenn. I will tell him you got to do David's podcast. He's a, he's an impressive guy. Um, he's the he's war. A, he's, he's the a, Warren moon of private jets, man. I got to have him on. <laughs> he, absolutely, he absolutely is. And they, you know, and it's just, it's been great to see. They literally just, um, you talk about giving back. And I think this is important as well, right? But I'm, I'm looking at my phone right here because um, they literally just made a deal um, to, uh, to be the match, you know? And so be the match is, you know, is, is somebody that helps with um, bone marrow transplants, you know? Yeah. And so in essence, one of the issues is especially in, in, in COVID times is basically if they have a match with a bone marrow transplant, you know, somebody, a donor and somebody who needs it, getting them together because it's, you know, to yeah. rare to find that match. And so how do you get them together? And so they've donated their private planes to like, we'll fly whoever we need to wherever, which I think is, I don't know. Right? They're That's just, awesome. they're, good, it, they're good people. It's a, it's a great company. I'm proud to be associated with them. And uh, yes, if anyone listening needs private travel and wants it at a, you know, at a third of what other private travel companies do, uh, go jet it. <laughs> go check out uh, <laughs> I love uh, it, Jen. Well, you yeah. you are so much fun to watch and thank you for everything that you do. Come back anytime.